I'm here about three miles outside the city of Rome, the ancient walls of Rome. I'm actually right here touching the Roman road. This is the famous Roman road, the Appian Way. The Bible tells us that the church, the, the church of Rome came out here to greet Paul as he was being brought in for the first time that he was put in prison. What a thought that the people of God were here saying, Paul, welcome in, and Paul walked this vein. This was the main artery that bled into Rome. And then as a prisoner, he sat in that house prison and wrote great books, great letters. This is where he wrote the letter, the people of Corinth, there in Rome. The book of Ephesians was written there and then delivered out of Rome through this road, those letters came. And not just to the world, but throughout history to our world. Today, we know those letters because they came out of this road by the glory of God. God inspires Paul, gives him the words to say, and Paul becomes the pen that God uses to give us these letters. Paul is obsessed with God. You read his letters and you see that they're not really his words, but God's words. He's not complaining about the food in the prison. He's not complaining about being stoned almost to death. He's not complaining about being shipwrecked. He's not complaining about how mean the guard is at the prison. He is talking about God. It just reeks out of everything that he's about. That's why Paul says in Romans 1, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it has the power to save everybody. Jews, Gentiles, you, me, none of us are exempt. All of us need a savior and all of us can receive that salvation through Jesus Christ. So I guess it'd be pretty timely, wouldn't it? Since we're on the Roman road to maybe open up some of these inspired words and to read what we know now to be called the Roman road. The Roman road is a way of saying, this is the plan of salvation as explained in the book of Romans, five passages of scripture. Let's take a few minutes and look at this. This is awesome. The first essential step in the Roman road is Romans 3.23. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The reason that this is so important is that it says all, not some. It says most, no. It says some, no. It says everybody. You, me, from Hitler to Billy Graham. It doesn't matter. All of us are born sinners in this world. The Bible tells us that through Adam, sin entered the world, and we're all a part of Adam's family line. No one ever had to teach you how to sin when you were growing up. God is a holy and a perfect and a righteous God, and his standard is perfection, and you and I are sinners. And because we're fallen sinners, that sin separates us from God, as we're about to see. This is the second step, Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. This is an absolute truth. Our sinful nature, the fact that we're all guilty in the courtroom of life, condemns us to eternal death. That's a very real place called hell. It's all over scripture, not just here. Now that's pretty bad news here in the second step, but that's only the half of the second step. Listen to the rest of Romans 6, 23. Yes, it says the wages of sin is death, but then after that there's a comma, praise God for this comma, because it says this, but the gift of God is eternal life. Even though you and I deserve eternal death because we're sinners, God, gives us the gift of his son, Jesus, and gives us a way, the only way for eternal life. He says, the gift of God is eternal life. How? In Christ Jesus, our Lord. See, life is all about whose hands you're in. In our sinful nature, we get eternal death because we deserve it. We're guilty of sin. But in Christ Jesus, we get the gift of eternal life, not what we deserve put a basketball in my hands and it's worthless. Take the same basketball out of my hands and put it in LeBron's hands, it's worth a lot of money. Take a golf club and put it in my hands, worthless, trust me. Put the same golf club in Tiger Woods' hands, worth a lot of money. It's all about whose hands it's in. My life in the hands of Satan, the adversary, in the hands of my old nature, in the hands of me trying to do it on my own good deeds, no good. In Christ Jesus, eternal life. For the third step of the Roman road, you've got to back up just a little bit to Romans 5, 8. 
This is where God unwraps the gift. This is where God shows us his salvation plan. This is where God demonstrates for us how a sinless God, a perfect God, can save sinful you and me. This is what it says. But God demonstrated his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. See, a sinless God in the courtroom of life looks at sinful us and says, you're 100% guilty. That's true, right? We're all sinners. But yet, we can't look at God and go, okay, I'll pay the penalty. We can't go to church enough, write tithe checks big enough, sing loud enough Christian songs, wear enough Christian t-shirts, watch enough Christian videos. We can't do it on our own. Clean up our act, we can't do it. The Bible says our very best is like a dirty rag before a holy and a perfect God. So Jesus comes and becomes the sacrifice. He becomes the one who steps in and says, the deed has to be paid. The penalty has to be paid and I will pay it. I will die for that person. Die for David Nasser. And that's what this means, that Christ dying for us on the cross was him paying the penalty for our sins. Romans 10, 13 is the fourth step of the Roman road. Here we see this promise from God that you and I can bank on. I have built my life on this passage because I know that when God says it, it's the truth. Listen to this. Paul says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That means, again, in the courtroom of life, I'm 100% guilty. And God says, how do you plead? And instead of saying 100% guilty and 100% condemned, I say 100% guilty, but 100% forgiven because I have called upon the name of the Lord Jesus to save me. You see it? Yes, guilty, but yes, pardoned. How? Through Christ. Finally, we come to a place, hopefully where this becomes more than just a bunch of theology and a piece of paper. This becomes more than just you getting an evaluation of the state of your being. Hopefully this becomes applicational in your life. Listen to what Paul says in the next step of the Roman road. This is Romans 10, 9. He says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. See, that's going one step further in how do I call upon the name of the Lord? You call his specific name, the Lord Jesus. You say, Jesus, I can't, but you did. See, all of a sudden, this becomes more than just you and I going, I believe that Jesus is perfect. I believe that he died on the cross, but no, we call upon the name of the Lord, the Lord Jesus, and we say, Jesus, I know that you walked this earth, lived a perfect life, and then you died a sinner's death. I know that they beat you. I know that they bruised you. I know that they mocked you. They put a crown of thorns on your head. They laughed at you, even though you didn't deserve it. And I deserved all of that. I know that it wasn't nine inch nails that kept you on that tree, on that cross. It was my sin that nailed you to the cross. I know they pierced your side and blood and water flowed out. I know they took your body off the cross though. And I also know they put you in a tomb. And three days later, when they came back, the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty because you're alive. You're a resurrected savior. And I want you to be alive in me. You conquered death. And I want you to conquer the death, the penalty of my sin. This is the gospel. This is the Roman road that leads us to the foot of the cross but even further, takes us to an empty tune. This is the resurrected life. I'm standing at the footsteps of the holy staircase. For centuries, people have come here to worship God. These stairs hold a lot of history. The Emperor Constantine, who was a Christian, his mother went to Jerusalem and brought these stairs from Pilate's castle. These were the stairs that more than likely Jesus Christ was on when Pilate condemned him to the cross. This has been a great place for reflection and thanksgiving. 
People have come here and have said, you know what, on bended knee, I am thankful, King Jesus, that you walked the steps of verdict for me. I couldn't do it, but you did. It's been a place where people say, you were condemned so that I didn't have to be. But just as in any other church building of any denomination, it's also sadly been a place where people have come and have on bended knee thought maybe this miscued thought of every step, every prayer, I can get the favor of God if I pray really long, if I pray really, really hard, if I cry enough tears on these staircases, I can earn the love of God. If we're not careful, haven't you seen people, maybe you've been involved in it myself, I know I have, of going to church and thinking, if I go to enough churches, if I go enough Wednesday night and Sunday morning and Sunday night and go to Monday night visitation, then maybe God will love me more. If I pray really, really hard, if I have a quiet time every single day, then maybe God will love me more. See, that's work. That's not finding worth in what Christ did. That's not faith. That's basically duty. And what this place doesn't need to be for us, but any sanctuary, whether it's a closet that we pray in at home or it's a place like this, what it never needs to be for us is a place where we come to try to find favor with God. See, if it's about the steps, then are 28 ever gonna be enough? If it's about the prayer time that you spend on the steps, what if you spend 10 minutes, but the person beside you spends 20? What if the person the next day comes back and spends one day per step? That was the moment that set the Apostle Paul free. When on the Damascus Road, he realized that all the work that he'd done, all the religion that he lived, wasn't enough to earn him the love of God, that only Jesus could. It is by the completed works of Jesus and our faith in that that we can be set free.